It's another bright day at Mtoto News. I am Anlin Barbara and this is Mtoto Insight. Kiambu Women Representative Gadoni Wamuchomba says the church should consider polygamy. She feels like polygamy can combat the situation of many children out of wedlock. But then, husbands in the church should ask themselves the bigger question of whether polygamy really makes their children feel comfortable. Specifically, if the husband does not live with some of his wives at the same time, some children complain about how their dads are never around, how they spend too much time away from home. These children may even experience separation anxiety. Husbands need to consider the psychosocial impact that polygamy will have on their children. To be honest to ourselves, when we heard our polygamous fathers and our forefathers, what wrong did they do? What crime did they commit? And why did we term it as a crime now? If there was no crime they committed, and we were born out of those families, and we excelled, why not go there? If that is where we are going to get the solution. We are so pretentious today, and our pretentious lives, lifestyle is what is costing us these problems we have today. So if polygamous is what is going to sort us out, let's go there. We interact with the members of parliament in, in, in parliament who, who openly talk about their four wives, their five wives, and they are okay. If they never owned to those families, maybe they will be street families. We give birth to these children and we don't want to own up to them. It is estimated that 2.7 million children between the age of 0 to 17 years could be living in institutional care worldwide. According to Article 27 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, CRC, affords every child the right to a standard of living adequate from the child's physical, mental, spiritual, moral, and social development. and requires that parents or those responsible for the child secure the conditions of living necessary for the child's development. The article further states that Parents or legal guardians have the primary duty for the upbringing and development of the child. However, there are many conditions where parents are unable to fulfill these obligations, rendering their children without proper parental care and protection. Evidence-based research shows that children do best with their families in communities where they can establish lifelong bonds and fulfill their potential. Children and young people must be involved in decision-making on their long-term care. Alternative care placements should keep siblings together wherever possible. Formal and informal care should be carried out along guidelines that promote the safety, protection and development of children. All care placements should be monitored and meet agreed-upon standards. Children under three years should not be placed in residential settings, but in family-based settings where alternative care is needed. The Fourth International Center for Research and Innovation in Social Work CRISO conference took place between 19 to 22nd March in Kigali, Rwanda. The conference hosted by University of Rwanda had delegates from over 40 countries. The delegates discussed on professional social work and sustainable development goals. The papers presented included social work, ethics and legislation, social administration, policy process and advocacy, and social protection and social security. The conference was held to coincide with the International Social Work Day. Delegates attending the conference walked through Kigali to the Memorial Park as part of the commemoration. So Child's Eye Foundation, our mission and vision is to see a Uganda free of orphanages um, and to see all children growing up in safe and loving families. Uh, the project that I manage specifically for Child's Eye Foundation is called Keeping Children in Healthy and Protective Families. 
So we are a three-year operational research project operating in nine districts uh, of the central region of Uganda, partnering with uh, childcare institutions, orphanages, um, to reintegrate children back to their families. So at the moment we're about one year into implementation um, and we have the, the, part, the project is a consortium. So um, we are one partner, we're managing the case management component. We also have um, Transcultural Psychosocial Organization of Uganda, TPO Uganda, who manage a parenting component. Um, and then we have Makerere University, I'm pointing to my colleagues over here, sorry, <laughs> um, who are, are studying. They're our research partner and they study the process as we go. So the overall research question is to evaluate whether the inclusion of a structured home-based parenting program um, alongside household economic strengthening and case management, if it improves reintegration outcomes. Um, so we'll complete the research at the end of 2019 and we're hoping that the paper can then be used to influence policy and programming um, globally really. I think the big one for us, and this is a learning that's also been, I think, very well spoken about here in Rwanda at this conference, um, is that the movement needs to be government-led. Um, the policy is there in Uganda, the legal framework is there, um, but it seems somehow that it's it's just not trickled down to the to the grassroots yet. So I would say that our biggest learning is is around that sensitisation. Um, you actually asked a very good question in the previous question that we in the previous session, sorry, that you know how do we how do we position ourselves so that we're not seen as being against child welfare because people have been looking at institutional care for a very long time as the dominant model of care. So it's not easy to come in with this concept that is, it seems very novel to people that children belong in families. It's hard for us to understand, um, but I think the learning is that the policies there, government needs to be sensitizing on these policies. Uh, any initiative towards DI reintegration needs to be government-led. Um, for us as well, as well in year one, the big learning, which is something that I presented on at the conference on Tuesday actually, was around partnership building. So not just looking at the institutions as you know a barrier to be pushed out of the way, but recognizing the agency and the strength of these institutions as well, seeing them as valuable partners, bringing them alongside, um, recognizing that they know these children best. It's in the children's best interest to work with them to cooperate. Um, so I think for us in year one, we've, we've really put a strong focus on building those partnerships, uh, and I hope that we can continue doing that throughout the lifespan of the project. You're working basically on reintegration reintegration, and partnership. So for me here, I'm thinking of partnership between the organization or the institution and the family. Yeah. Because some of the time, like there was, a, a, there was a documentary on CNN showing children being taken to America who are not, and they're not orphans. So what kind of partnership have you built between the organization or institution, the, the, the children's home and the family to ensure that there's smooth running and there's no, like, uh, some form of fighting? Or do you don't look as if you're the one who's causing the fight between the family and an institution? Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic, definitely, because we, we do often find ourselves in the middle. Um, I think it again comes back to sensitization and it's the importance of having the institution working alongside you. Uh, you need to, the organization and yourselves need to understand that you're working towards a common goal and you're not, you're, your work isn't in conflict with each other. I think where um, social services are sort of presenting a united front and also that there's, you know, a promise for ongoing support that the family needs, uh, it's much, much easier. Yeah. As at Mtoto News, we encourage all the social workers to do a good job. But you should remember, if the community does not encourage them to work, our children will be alone. For Mtoto News, I am Anlin Barbara. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Mtoto News. Have a blessed day.